Hello, friends. I hope y'all are doing so well today. Happy Wednesday and welcome back to another Photoshop Wednesdays on Adobe Live, where each stream will cover everything that you can do in Photoshop, going from illustrations to photo editing, from digital art to compositing. I want to make sure that y'all tune in every and each Wednesday to learn more about the diverse tool. So as always, thank you so much for joining us today on Adobe Live. Make sure you join the Adobe Live community. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram at Adobe be live. That way you can be up to date with the latest streams, updates, and so much more. So I'm really, really excited to be here today. Today we are joined with Joelle and Logan from Lowell Studios. Joelle and Logan, how are y'all doing today? Good. We're doing great. Uh, I'm Logan. This is Joelle. Hi. Uh, we are Lowell Studios. We're a creative duo based in Nashville, Tennessee, and we create bright, colorful commercial imagery for brands. Uh, and we're just trying to bring fun back into advertising. So. Oh, I love that. I'm so excited. I've only been to Nashville once in my life. So I it's a, one of the places that I want to go back. It was I went as a kid, but I always <laughs> like when people are like, oh, I'm from Tennessee. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> um, but anyone that's joining the live stream today, <clears throat> make sure you join where you uh, drop where you are joining from. Mm -hmm. I am joining from Phoenix, Arizona. Drop it in the chat so that way we can know where everybody is coming from. And let's just really look at how far our reach goes. But I'm really excited for today's stream because um, Joelle and Logan are going to be taking us behind the scenes of their creative process as they composite a, cap a captivating, image, um, captivating image, excuse me, for a fictional perfume ad using the power of Photoshop. So um, Joelle and Logan, please go ahead and just introduce a little bit more about what y'all do, your work, and let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to be doing today. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, we primarily do like product photography and like composites um, for like commercial clients. So um, right now this is our website. This is some of our work that we've been doing. Um, yeah, mostly cosmetic work we like to do uh, with some of our clients. And we do get into some more portraits that can be more on, are on our Instagram. So if you wanna go check that out, it's at Lowell Studios on Instagram. But yeah, today we'll be actually focusing on this image and we'll go in how in depth on how we uh composited this uh poison perfume witchy Ooh. advertisement so oh, i love the smoke in yeah. the ad <laughs> <laughs> awesome well if y'all have any questions comments that you want me to share with or ask joelle and logan please be sure to drop them in the chat so that way we can keep this as engaging as possible but i think we're ready to go ahead and get started and we can hop into photoshop and i guess just start this ad <laughs> absolutely yeah so we got this loaded up and then I'll take the Take yeah, the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be the final asset, but there's a lot that goes into it. So get ready. I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and turn. I'm going to turn everything off. Um, as we go through, you can see it's already like just all disappearing. Doo, doo, doo. Okay. And then all the way at the bottom, I saved, I put in here all the original photos that we had. Um, you can see like just so we did three different shoots for this and i just want to oh, say wow. it would have been a lot easier if we used stock imagery mm -hmm. uh, especially for this acrylic paint in the fish tank mm -hmm. really wish in hindsight we would have done that. <laughs> but i'm still glad that we did it because we got some really cool um you'll see you'll see later oh wow so, i'm so excited okay so yeah there's all these different like takes and then like how we got the hands um each hand and here's like all the different paint blobs we're going to use today they're all different sizes just because i grabbed them from the layers already here's one of my favorites See, it looks like a little skull okay. oh wow yeah it does <laughs> <laughs> and then we shot so we shot the poison bottle separately and we did like a bunch of different lighting on it and we composited all of that together just because it has so many curves to the bottles. It was just a lot better to composite it all. So we could get these highlights that we wanted, but mm -hmm. still get no reflections on the front. So we'll, we're going to show you guys how we did all that. Oh, I'm awesome. going to start with the poison bottle. Get rid of all of that stuff down there. And then do, do so you can kind of see like it started like that. Yeah, I'm going to edit this layer one second. Turn off the top one. Turn off the, oh, no, that's the thing. Oh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, going from here and then we masked in to this, you can see where it's still kind of like 
not fully done. And then I added in like another layer to kind of extend all of that. And then here I'm going to show you guys a lot of cleanup that we would do because we're going to get into so much masking later. Um, so I want to show you guys like a couple of different tools that we would use on this. And if you don't use hotkeys, you should really use hotkey <laughs> hotkeys because it's going to speed up your workflow so much. Yeah. So J is a hotkey that I use all the time. It's going to be all of these different. Here, I'll show you guys. Do, do, do. Why isn't it coming up? Okay. Well, here you do it. So J is just, it has the patch tool and you can, um, I wanted to show, oh, because your Photoshop is different. We're editing on Logan's Yeah, we have to get the laptop sometimes. So. <laughs> sometimes it makes like a little drop down menu and you can see all of your healing tools. So okay. his are already right here. So here's like his spot healing and then the normal healing and the patch tool. And now there's a remove tool. It has like little sparkles. It's amazing. Ooh. I'm going to let you run through them though. All right. Yeah. So like we can do a little cleanup here. We'll do, so this is the remove tool. Uh, I think, I believe it is, so you just kind of do shift J and you can cycle through all those things until you get the little bandage with the sparkles. Um, and then let's go to the file. And then you can just, all you have to do is you can check, uncheck that remove after each stroke at the top here. And you can click, 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 click whatever you want, just that you want removed. And you can just press that check mark and it just, goes away well in a second <laughs> it takes a second but it's really good it's a lot better than the normal remove oh yeah. yeah that's really nice so yeah just that turn off and on there and it's just it's so seamless if you don't have it on remove after each stroke it will do that loading screen each mm -hmm. time so that's Got why we like it. to remove okay. that check mark you can show them if you like. yeah so I'll, I'll just do that and then every time you click it's just uh it'll it'll do that it'll load every time yeah which, okay yeah. so it's kind of smart it's just kind of mm -hmm. get all your spots and then let it load yeah. at once okay yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes i'll have a hundred dots and then i just press the check mark and then in, <laughs> in five seconds they're all gone so oh, wow. yeah oh i think oh i did click it okay <laughs> and it's like yeah, a we'll lot just... better and even more accurate than using maybe like a clone step tool mm -hmm. or even like the healing yeah tool. and sometimes with colors like certain colors you'll notice that there's a slight variation so sometimes you have to go back mm -hmm. and clean it up but it it does change that detail and make it more seamless oh, than having nice. like a little piece of dust there or something so yeah, yeah. and then um if it was me i would take the patch tool once this loads <laughs> So hitting shift J to go back to the patch tool, I'm just going to like circle this big highlight and I would just move it. You could do frequency separation. You could do a bunch of different things. Um, I didn't like that. So I'm going to hit command Z. Um, but essentially, I usually try and look for something a little bit more flat. I don't like that either. <laughs> so yeah, I would find a different way to remove this and... Normally, it would take me some time to experiment with it, but because I already have it done right here, you can see that I think I ended up patch tooling it out, but then I also blended out the bottom and everything. Mm. So there's just a lot of different ways. And then because this is like, whenever I'm grabbing things, I usually just use like before the new update, because now there's an amazing masking tool, <laughs> but I used to just do a lasso. Now I would have just grabbed the object select tool because it does mm -hmm. such a good job. It's so minimal cleanup at the end and you can even if you wanted to pull off the mask well i have it on the there because then mm. i can just go in with my brush and i'm gonna paint it with the white because i want to reveal it okay and i would just add this in mm. yeah and then i'm just gonna go around that little highlight there so i'm just and the reason I like it to be selected is now I don't have to worry about editing out here. I only have to worry about what's in here. Yeah. And before you would have had to have pen tooled that or gone in and brushed it back in manually. And that new, you know, object select is just amazing. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, so. That would normally take us a little bit of time, but just to like zoom through that and, you know. <laughs> save I like how you guys kept like the reflections 
you know, just to kind of give it that, like that dimension. Mm -hmm. I think especially like with this bottle, this bottle is so unique and like not like a regular just circle. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting trying to like photo, photo photograph these specific highlights. So was, I think we were in the studio for quite a while trying to figure this out. Second. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we ended up getting it and we ended up deciding in the studio that it would be smarter to be able to accentuate all of the different parts of the bottles with mm -hmm. the amount of lights that we had. Mm -hmm. which I know a lot of beginner photographers, you know, feel. <laughs> so it's easier for us to take that composite into Photoshop and just make it look really good. Like we did have a bunch of lights. So yeah. Anyways, moving on now that we have our poison oh, bottles. Yes. Um, so deciding on the backdrop, right? That's like one of the biggest mm -hmm. things I have. I usually pick a base out of all of my images and I'll be like, okay, this is going to be starting point. And then I go from there. So in here, I went ahead and masked in, you know, a bunch of smoke and then just just layering on the smoke and then adding in like the bottom of the table. Mm -hmm. So if that wasn't there, I would have, let's say the object select tool is going to work because this is, you know, also monotone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really good, <laughs> you guys. So yeah, I would just zoom in and then I would take my lasso and then if you hold option and then I believe on windows, is that, is it alt? I don't, I, I used to be windows. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you hold down option, it will remove the mask. Yeah. So okay. then I can just zoom out and I don't have to worry. Oh, look. And then down here, it didn't quite grab these. So I'm going to hit shift and it's going to add to the mask. Got it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And then you just hit this button down here. It looks like a little camera. <laughs> and then that's masked in so yeah it's just all about kind of deciding where things are going to go Do and then the smoke there? at the bottom mm -hmm. um because we go back a couple layers yeah, when yeah. you added in the smoke so where did that come from did you have a separate image that you had the smoke coming in from bottom and you masked that in or did you take that from i know you mentioned some wanting to utilize uh, stock images but it seems like everything you guys did in shooting so mm -hmm. what if you can explain that a little bit further yeah so like how we put all the smoke in here yeah yeah so we just took in another asset let's see if i delete this mask it looks like this asset oh that's because mm. this is okay yeah so overneath or on top of that ball i put it in right there sorry i'm trying to figure out okay that was me cleaning this up And then, sorry, I'm like, I've done so much work to this. I'm like, what did <laughs> I do here? I did a lot. <laughs> I'm like malfunctioning. But yeah, I think I just took another asset and I laid it over on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I what I figured. What it, is. it looks like this became the new base. Uh, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, that's what happened. I ended up not even using this layer. What the? <laughs> uh, okay. So yeah, that is the base layer of one of the photos we took. That's just the plain photo. And then this is masked on top. So this would have been the original photo. This is what's masked mm -hmm. on top. And then we start laying in like the hands. The hands. And I'm going to let Logan go through those. But yeah, because they're a little. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll go through. We can start on the left hand. So Let's I think this is just so I'll just turn this layer off and turn that on. There you go. So like so we did shoot this um completely separate. And then let me turn that right hand off so we oh can see. Oh my goodness, better. the nails. I didn't notice the nails before. <laughs> yeah, those were special ordered nails. Uh, very long. <laughs> very, very long. <laughs> yes. Uh we did a yeah, we did a lot for those, but so yeah, this was just shot while we were doing the smoke, just so we can have that realistic smoke mm -hmm. under her hands um, and kind of like going intertwining between the nails and stuff like that. Getting the hand to be perfectly positioned took a lot of shooting and I'm like sure. awkward reaching. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell. Um, but yeah, so we shot that a lot and then we shot both hands a lot. And then can you take that off? Yep. 
And then if you want to show like how we masked it in or how we would mask it in, mm -hmm. I'll just still. <laughs> we have and a then, quick question. We have a question asking yeah. where um, Voodoo Val wants to know where can I get those nails? Asking for <laughs> Fred. <laughs> um okay so i ordered them just clear off amazon and then it was like oh. it was really cheap actually it was like four dollars for a like hundred mm -hmm. something and i painted them oh there you go yep. <laughs> yeah just acrylic paint oh <laughs> uh, no i used no polish oh yeah i forgot all that <laughs> they were originally supposed to go on my hands i think um i think we decided to put them on hers so. i do really <laughs> love putting nails on logan's hands <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Uh, so it so you guys like decide. This. You guys um, masked in each individual hand. So you, mm -hmm. you said you yeah. shot each individual hand separately, and then you shot them together. What made you decide to just do one hand mask in each individual hand, opposed to two hands? Um, it was actually so while we were shooting, it was really difficult to not obscure kind of the background to make that fog look so seamless. Yeah. Um. So to if we were to do both we would be like obstructing a lot of the scene. So we did one hand kind of reaching around. I don't think it felt good. I think it was kind of painful to well, <laughs> try and reach around. Well, the fog couldn't come in if I was sitting above the ball and I really that wanted the fog is. to be able to come mm -hmm. through realistically. So it was a lot of like, okay, well, like we reach. have to shoot one hand at a time. Yep. Also, my foot was doing the fog machine, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was shooting. Her foot was on the fog machine. And then my and arm her hand was like reaching. <laughs> yeah. So it was some maneuvering. But um, here, I'll show you guys. So I had this, I just, you know, circled it with the object select tool. And then I hit this mask button. But you can see right here that it's not quite looking, you know, as good as we want it to be. So I'm gonna hit B to go to the brush hotkey. And then I like to use my brackets. So, you know, the right bracket makes it bigger and the left bracket makes it smaller. Um, and then I'll usually, I'll hit command plus and I'll zoom into the image. And then I'll kind of just, especially these bigger parts, oop, I'm gonna hit X to switch the black and white. So hotkeys, you guys, it saves so much time because if not, I would have been up here. I would have been over here a couple times. So anyways, I'm just going to go in and I just clean that up. And then since these edges are so like hard, mm -hmm. um, I will go up here and just like make that a little softer. You can also turn down your opacity. Oh, lost a little bit of nail. And then if I click right here and I hold shift, it's going to like give me that straight line edge so that i'm going to make this even smaller and then kind of just bring in that point so yeah there you go. it really helps with tiny areas because i like my stuff to look really good so i'll get it's down into almost the pixels and i'll have a really tiny <laughs> brush and having that shift click getting those mm -hmm. lines really quickly just helps a lot absolutely um, i agree but yeah, so hitting X again, erasing, but you guys get the idea. And then normally this would take time, but we already have it masked out up here. I'm going to hide that. And then the right hand is the same thing. So if you guys want to see that, I can show you, but it is the same thing. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. Um, something we did do, though, is we added the smoke on the right hand oh. because there wasn't enough smoke inside the palm. Mm -hmm. So all we really did... Yeah, I have like one I can already. So this is the image. It's covering both hands. It's kind of hard to see. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just mask it. And then I'm going to invert this mask so I can actually see my photo. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take my brush and on a low opacity because we're blending in smoke. You know, we don't want yeah. it to be like extremely in your face. Yeah, absolutely. Making it bigger with the brackets. And then I'm going to hit X again to reveal. I like the attention just... of attention to detail that y'all mm -hmm. did here, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> to make it feel and look as realistic, like even just something that someone could overlook like that, the smoke on the palms, like it, it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> of, course, of course. And then see how like, it's kind of hard to brush it in and not get it on the nails. Um, I'll go in, I'll zoom in. And then... I think at the end, I ended up putting it over the nails, but I like to have full control. Mm -hmm. So I decided how much was going to go over the nails versus how much is in the palm because I wanted there to be more in here and less out here just for that depth. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm just going to hit X and I'm just going to 
take all of that away, hitting shift click. And that's the type of stuff that I would go in and I would clean up. And now that I'm thinking about it, you probably could use object select and have that, you know, be selected for you. I wonder. I wonder. Uh, she's not getting it right there. Oh, that's why. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hit command D to deselect. So that helps a lot. Oh. No, it's still not. Oh, because you're on the smoke layer. That's why. Go to the, the right uh, hand. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of having there too many go. layers. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then I'm going to click. So I was just down here to get that nail, like, exactly. So now I'm going to go back up here to my mask, and then I'm going to paint in right here. And honestly, when it's selected like that, you can have the biggest brush you want. Mm -hmm. And then just hit Command-D. Yep. So yeah. So there's just a lot of cleanup like that. And then we have the hands. Mm -hmm. oh, so normally so this takes so much longer because you're going in and you're, you know, you're brushing it and you're doing it all. But because mm -hmm. we already have this finished, it's going a lot faster. Mm -hmm. So if you're editing at home, don't feel bad if it takes a long time. How, how long would you say this image took you? Um, Somewhere, I don't know the exact time mm -hmm. but somewhere between six and nine hours because i remember it being like that shape of a number <laughs> is that weird we're also perfectionists so if something's yeah. not going our way we're gonna make it go our way yeah. kind of thing. So <laughs> if it takes longer it takes longer also we experiment a lot so like for example i'll show you guys selective color next but this is kind of what it can do i was like well i want these nails to be red to match the perfume that we're gonna have in this mm. minute so I made them red, and then I thought, no, <laughs> no, they won't be red. <laughs> but it's really cool that you have the power to do that. Absolutely. So with selective color, which I'm going to show you guys, or I'm going to let you show because I've been talking. I was just going to move this out of the way first. Yeah. There you go. Um, so yeah. that one, the backdrop. So yeah, this is where we decided to go purple for everything. Um. And we open up the selective color and we go to, because originally our um, main scene was blue. So we're going to go to our our blues and it's almost maxed out on like everything <laughs> so, <laughs> to really, to really Get make that. it the purple that we want. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we can just kind of start where we were. And what and went into that creative direct decision, if you don't mind me asking, as far as making going from was, the blue to yeah. purple? So, <laughs> so I knew I always wanted it to be purple, but mm -hmm. velvet fabric is like, you know, almost $30 a yard. Yep. And absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had already owned, I think, two or three like different panels of the mm -hmm. blue velvet. And mm -hmm. we knew for our portfolio that we didn't want to have a blue image. And I really liked the way the purple and red paired off of each other. Mm -hmm. And knowing that I can change so many things in Photoshop, I thought, well, let's just buy more blue panels because it'll be a lot easier and cohesive mm -hmm. to change across the board. And I'm pretty sure in the store, I didn't like the purple that was there too. <laughs> um, but uh, a good thing to note when you're doing selective color and when you're doing hue and sat is it's a lot easier to change something when it's in the same realm, if that yes. makes sense. Yeah. So blue to purple is a lot easier than um, blue to red or to yellow. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and then, so we did end up doing more than one um, selective color for this backdrop just to make it a little bit more because we did end up maxing out that blue section almost. So we did um, change that. It was a little too cold yeah. as well. I wanted it mm. to be a warmer purple. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you could see that. And then we also had a mask so we can mask out these nails. The nails um, yeah. So those weren't uh, uh, those weren't affected by the selective color. The so. way he did that was by hitting command click. Oh yeah, so you command and then you click on your mask with your select and then mm -hmm. uh, that selects um, your mask for you. So. Perfect. And then for you to go from the the purple, like the cool purple to the more warm purple, what did you, what color were you on? Because I know you talked about that you were in blues mm -hmm. to go from that blue to purple. Did yeah. you go into magentas at all or did you stay in the, in like, where did you go to 
make it a little we bit more did not touch magentas we did touch science, science a little okay, bit okay there we go um but it was majority ma yeah it was mainly the blue and the, uh, the science on the second um yeah. selective color just a to... let me double check the first layer of science as well on the first layer yeah i oh, think okay. we Those might have just duplicated it and then we de we uh, lowered the opacity as well just so we can kind of mix them a little bit more mm, okay. so it looks like what changed was the black levels and the cyan levels in the blue mm -hmm. um also a thing i like to i generally I'll go to the color I think it is like blue and then I'll play around in a couple other colors because sometimes you're like oh is this green or is this yellow mm -hmm. you know it's and then a great one to always do is neutrals because yes. that will change everything yes <laughs> yes, yes yeah yes. gives you that full control um yeah, yeah then... I'm a huge fan of selective color because of that control yeah. um yeah and so it's really great Mm -hmm. it's so nice and next we ended up using another selective color on the base of the uh, crystal ball um, just to make that a little bit more purple um, so we did I think we pulled up on the it was brown so we went into the red we went to the red yeah and then we added a hue and set on top of that just to make it more seamless with that background so. sometimes you can't get there with just the selective color <laughs> so you have to use hue and set Sorry. And then also when you're using Hue and Sat, you can go into this drop down menu to just pick the yellows or reds or greens. We use that sometimes, but not as much as selective color. Um, so we'll kind of just to play with it, just to show you guys if we can change this into a different color. Let's see. I am going to leave that on. I wonder what would happen. So yeah, it'd be really easy. I wonder if we made it red. That might be kind of mm. difficult. It looks like because we already have the selective colors to take out a lot of that brown um because we already have that purple yeah. undertone so now when we do and then if you hit colorize as well it will let you make it whatever color you want and then you can increase the saturation or decrease it sometimes mm -hmm. it's better sometimes it's not mm -hmm. so yeah as you can see i think it's because we already have the hue or sorry, the selective color underneath. That's why the colorize isn't as, you know, as effective. Mm -hmm. But it's just all the cool different stuff you can do. You can, you have literally have full control over anything honestly, you want to do. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Yeah. So I'm going to hit Command Z to get it back to where it was. I have to do it a few times. <laughs> just a couple. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so. Awesome. I think after that, we ended up moving to the um, the outside ball glow just to make that like Ooh. pop even more you know so we can go into there let's turn off wow there's a lot of layers i know how y'all could how y'all oh, kept track of all these layers <laughs> omg <laughs> um back when i was in college i was making composites with over 70 layers oh my gosh oh <laughs> and my gosh i think it just really helps <laughs> yeah so just i think practice yeah I think I, I believe it, we just used a brush, um, yeah, a regular brush, uh, like really soft. So I can, yeah, just recreate that. Let's make a new layer. He hit option click to make it deselect, just mm -hmm. so you guys know. When it has that little down arrow, that means it's only being applied to that bottom layer. Yep. All right, here we go. Um, so we just let's make that brush about the size of the ball and then we'll go and make that hardness zero i don't think we need to do the opacity at the moment uh and let's pick the color what do you want to do i believe i chose red because at the time i was still thinking red nails red product mm -hmm. um and then also i just i don't know sometimes <laughs> i can't explain what i do <laughs> uh and yeah we just we just click like that I think it was a harder opacity. The harder? All right. Yeah. Fine, I'll do it. <laughs> Maybe like in the 70s. All right. Yeah, what a good time. What a good year. <laughs> All right. Let's... Oops. Make that bigger. Wrong way. There. And then click. It's just one click. Mm -hmm. It's that easy. Mm -hmm. Instead of having to, you know make a big circle selection or use the marquee tool and like do all of that i it's just the brush yeah 
And then we uh, ended up going to the blend modes and doing a soft light to add mm. that to kind of have that peek through and kind of look like it's like like going all around the, the yeah. globe. Um, and then I think we ended up masking it out of the like the bottom pillar. So that's when we can go into the that objects object select tool. We'll go down to the pedestal where we adjusted that. I think I actually you can see right here. I just made a mask. Hold on, just to deselect and you could totally do it your way, but I think I just went in with a brush. You could do and that. I just masked it and then <laughs> I just took yeah, just for like ease. Um, so I'm gonna make a mask right here. And then I'm going to hit B for brush. I'm going to make it smaller with my brackets. And then I yeah, literally just right there. Sometimes the manual way is like, you know, it's I, I prefer a little it. more simple, <laughs> a little quicker. <laughs> yeah. So that's how we we got that, that ball glow. So just do those separately off and on. And also, I'm so sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> um, So if it's on here and I'm you know, sometimes I like to flip through and just see what's going to come up because you never really know. I know yeah. that this top part, that's really good for shadows. This part's really good for highlights. Mm -hmm. And then down here, it's always like, is, what am I doing? I really <laughs> like this one. And then I'll turn the opacity down a little bit. It just makes it feel more realistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like, and that's all from a red dot. <laughs> wow yeah that's why photoshop's so cool and then i'll decide <laughs> well you know maybe i want it to be this color or that color so then i went in with a hue and sad and i made it a little bit more purple and it looks like i brightened it a little bit and this is one of those cases where i use color eyes because mm. you know you can change it up here or you and then you're playing like oh i have to make it green to make it purple or you can just hit color eyes and go to purple mm -hmm. so yeah and then I think I added a top one and I left it red for just a little bit more warmth and depth in the color instead of it being just one color. Oh, wow. Again, yeah. that attention to detail <laughs> is very, very beautiful throughout this project. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Of course. And then masking in the ball base. So once again, our favorite tool, right? Mm -hmm. This guy. All you're going to do is it, it's already selecting it for you. Mm -hmm. So we're back to. So the reason we're going to throw in some more smoke is you see these like big highlights right here in the middle. Yeah. That's the thing about shooting a spear, especially a big glass ball. It's always going to have highlights. And instead of editing them out, we thought, well, let's just put in the smoke mm -hmm. where it already looks good. Mm. So why spend extra time editing? Right. And then literally just hit the object select tool pick our favorite photo where the ball looks beautiful and then just hit mask oops how do i go back ah one <laughs> sec <laughs> hit mask i don't know why that happened um so yeah and then it's already right there and we go in and like clean up those edges all mm -hmm. the time just kind of make that a little yeah. more seamless and mm -hmm. but and we don't worry about the color, about the inside of the ball, because we're going to be putting in so many just different acrylic paint things. And those are all greens and blues. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be changing the inside of the ball next. All of this outer glow stuff is just for the outside and the hands. Mm, makes sense. Yeah. So I'll let you go. All right. So this is where we get into throwing Ooh. in these cool blobs and water um yeah it was really fun doing this and this is where we wish we would have used stock uh but we have that experience now that we know how to shoot uh photograph these so how did you do that if, if you don't if you go yeah into the, so that process look like we have a fish tank full of water uh i don't know the size but it's pretty big um it's like your standard yeah fish tank uh we have and then like an injector right so you mm -hmm. know the syringes yeah um, but like the big ones people use for literally anything other than medical yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um sometimes cooking you know things like that uh so we filled a couple of those with acrylic it's like watered down acrylic paint mm -hmm. so it was a, a type of acrylic ink 
and you can get it in the craft store. Um, it was near. Honestly, there's all these different types of acrylic paint next to each other. It's going to be in that area. Mm -hmm. And we just like filled up different syringes and you eject it into the water. And it's really cool when you do multiple colors at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want to show just like right there, you can show that guy. There you go. So the reason wow. it turned green is because we did, I think we had teal, blue and yellow. Mm -hmm. And we chose these colors because... A, they're easier to Photoshop, but B, we thought that they're different enough on the color wheel that they're going to create cool colors together as mm -hmm. they blend and as they go in, just for depth. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm really glad. So I kind of wish we used stock, but I'm also glad we didn't because we got this really cool skull looking blob. And I don't know what happened in the universe. Something just aligned up <laughs> <laughs> and it's just really cool. And then we have some other ones that look like creepy, scary jellyfish that you'll see mm -hmm. later that I really love. So I'm glad we did this. Yeah, it was a, it was a fun learning exercise for us. So, oh, wow. yeah. yeah, so and then, so this is where we started. So we started with um, this. This is another image that we shot um wow. and the fish tank um and this was kind of like the base the to go with the clouds um just to add a little more texture in the in the in the ball so so a cool thing you can do is if you don't want to keep masking all the time you can click on something that's already masked so we know that this is the inside of the ball and we know that we want it to be in there so why not just hit you hit command and then you click on your mask and then you go back to your image and you just hit mask. And then it's there. Oh, perfect. There you go. There it is. Yeah. So, so it's just things like that that really speed up, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot of masking. <laughs> yes. It's a lot of masking. It's a lot of masking. Yeah. yeah. And it's honestly, if you just get like a couple clean masks in the beginning, if you're putting things into things, you can keep using that mask. It'll speed up the workflow a lot. Yeah. It's when you're masking a lot of different items that aren't laying on top of each other. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah. Anyways. So what we did for this is we have this guy. Um, turn that off. Reset that opacity. That's why. Oh, that's what's going on. So that's you can. That's so. What we did was we lowered the opacity and the fill just mm -hmm. to kind of make that blend more into the background of the of like the clouds inside the uh, the ball. So we also played with the blending modes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which one it was on, but I really like a couple of these. So that's something else. I'm going to be sitting in here and going, "Ooh, this one or this one for yeah. about 4 hours." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's just go. So if you ever do something and you're like, "Oh, I wish I don't know where I was." You can hit your history. Um uh, contextual taskbar right there. So yeah, you can just go back and Let's see. Let's do it right up to here. Yeah. Here. Okay, cool. So now we have it where it was. And then I want to show you guys how to put the skull in here. So we're going to turn that off. So now we essentially, you know, you've masked this image in. Mm -hmm. And then what we did is we laid it in twice. It looks like it wasn't on a blend mode. So that's cool. I should have put it on a blend mode because that looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Um, and then I took out some of the green already. And sometimes you guys, like the stuff does is not linear. Like I'll move on and then later I'm like, oh, that's green. I need to get rid of that, make that more red. So I could have been working way up here in the process and had gone back to down here and then gotten rid of that red. Um, and that's just a really simple, you know, making it red. <laughs> mm -hmm. You could have probably gone into selective color and pulled the greens out. So that's what's cool about Photoshop is there's always more than one way to do something. And sometimes there's like five different ways to do something. So it's just on however you want to do it. Let's see. So yeah, the skull, this girly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what we did was essentially I would turn the opacity down. If I was going to put something like this inside the ball, I would just turn down the opacity and then mm -hmm. I would hit command T and that's going to give me a free transform. And then I can kind of pick where I want it to go in the mm. ball. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of big. Maybe I want it smaller. Who knows? And also, 
sometimes you do something one time and it's one way and sometimes you make it another time and it looks another way mm. it's it's so funny how art works honestly <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna put that right there and then I can turn the opacity back up if I want to but once again we're just gonna hit command click on that ball and then hit mask and then it's in there and then I would looks like I would probably just turn the opacity down no I did blending mode fun so this is a fun little cheat sheet that I have <laughs> but yeah if you hit different blending modes it looks like it's gonna Ooh. have these really cool effects oh that is so cool and Voodoo Val made a comment that I think is on like brand with what what y'all have been talking about um you know they said that I think that this, that's major I do it all the time kind of jump around from place to place um mm -hmm. I don't think I ever yeah. just make a beeline through my project and just finish each step 100% before moving on sometimes you just kind of play around and say, do I like this? Do I like not like this? And just, I do the same thing even with my photo editing, you know, give yourself that creative freedom to just, mm -hmm. you know, explore yeah, different options. Yeah, cause it's not done until it's done. Like, you know, mm -hmm. when it's done. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, and then I would just turn the opacity down, you know, just kind of like make it feel. Mm -hmm. And then also you can, if you, let's say you wanted to have it in there and but have a different blending mode on it, if you want to like sometimes blending modes look really cool together so maybe i settle on that you know because mm. it goes from being like that to that so just kind of fun i in the past i made it look not like that wow i wow. made it look like that but that's because i have on these two guys so this is what i settled on in the past i made it really dark and that was with the color burn and then I ended up doing a hue and sack because I knew I wanted it to be red because mm -hmm. the poison bottle is red. Mm, and then okay. that was really dark. So you can see the, the hue and sack with the color eyes. And that was really dark. So then I just brightened it up. And the reason these little arrows are here, like I said earlier, just in case anyone, you know, is having problems with that, you just click option and it will apply it to mm. just this layer. And let's say um, you have it pulled up doo, 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 right here at the bottom too. Sometimes this is right here in your workflow. Like in the basic Photoshop, it would be up here, right here. You just click that. So that's if it wasn't applied to that layer and that's now that it is. And then once again, the brighten overall and just in there. So yeah, no, and just no. things like that make a big difference. And you could be in Photoshop like, oh my gosh, why is this not working? <laughs> um, there's or, so many buttons yeah or if you would have to normally you'd have to manually mask that out and just applying it to that layer underneath is really helpful because mm. you save a lot of time oh i love i love and we <laughs> are actually starting to get to like the mid way point in the stream so i just kind of want to reset the room if y'all are just now joining and you have any questions comments please feel free to drop them in the chat that way i can um mention it during throughout the stream and then also if you would like to nominate yourself or someone you know to be a guest on adobe live make sure you submit your recommendations for the creators in the tab on behance so if you're on behance right now you'll see there's a tab at the top that says guest recommendations go ahead and click on that and make any recommendations you would like for future guests and then also adobe's teresa Ao has conversations with some people who make up the rapidly expanding creator economy in her new podcast series in the making so make sure you subscribe now and follow along the full season i think we'll drop the link in the chat so that way y'all can go ahead and check out that podcast or you can search for the the podcast again it's called in the making wherever you listen to podcasts so just that to reset the room again if you have any questions please drop them and then also joelle logan i think this is also a good point that if anyone has just joined the stream um can we just kind of give a quick summary of what we've done thus far and what we have what we're going to keep mm -hmm. doing throughout the stream yeah um, if they just join, they're going to see a lot of the same stuff again, because it's just a lot more masking, but with a couple <laughs> different things, um, because that's what composites are. So, so far we've gone through and let me just don't, don't get, you know, discouraged by all these layers. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's complicated, but it's not that complicated. Um, so yeah, we've added in the skull. We talked about colorizing the backdrop. Originally it was blue. Let's see right here. So you can see that we changed that mm -hmm. and how we masked in both of these hands. So you'll see, cause the next thing we're doing is more masking. <laughs> so you guys oh, will see wow. how I did that again. But what's cool about the next one is um, 
I know that it's inside of a ball and I wanted to use a special Photoshop filter called Sphere Eyes. Um, I'll show you the original asset after I turn off this guy. Um, so this is the, oh, also we shot these just to reset because the room has been mm -hmm. reset. Um, this is acrylic paint in water in a fish tank. So if you guys weren't there for that and we use all these different colors to get all this depth. And the reason we did it is because we didn't think about using stock <laughs> and we should have, <laughs> but I'm glad we didn't. So now y'all have the experience. <laughs> yes. 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 So what I would do if I was selecting this, um, and not just using the object select tool. Another thing I like to do is I go up into the filters. So filter the drop down menu and then, um, Oh, wait. Nope. I'm doing select first. Sorry. My brain is so excited for the next step. <laughs> <laughs> so I hit color range and then I'll just hit the white because it's such a stark contrast between the backdrop and the subject that you're able to do that. Mm -hmm. And just if you want to be super safe, sometimes I hit shift just to add to it. I'll click around. And now when I hit OK, all of that is selected. Mm -hmm. And then I just hit the mask button. And then I'm going to invert it by hitting command I and it's right there. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So, um, the next step I would do is I would go in and hit filter and then I'm going to go to distort sphere eyes. And then I'm going to hit a hundred because I'm, I'm dramatic and I like dramatic flair. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, oh, this is doing it to the mask. One second. Let me click on that guy. So filters, eyes. so yeah, it'll kind of give you a little example of how it's going to look. And what it's going to do is it's going to make it a lot more round, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit Command T and move it over the ball. And I'm just going to get it to the right size. Kind of like the side where I want it. I know I want these little jellyfish looking guys. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you guys see. I don't know if it's like looking at clouds, um, <laughs> but I see jellyfish. Yeah, I see jellyfish too. Eh, clouds, <laughs> I can see clouds though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So um, you to do up here, and then I would probably lower the opacity. Actually, no. I would go in and I would clean up the mask around these edges. And then from there, it's all about, you know, changing the color. So just to show you like what we already did, that was a sphere. So I already had it in there and then masking out so that that can sit in the front, but that sits mm -hmm. behind, just bringing the skull to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And then I would go in and obviously change the color because that has to be done at some point. Mm -hmm. And there's this little spot right here in the mask. And I believe um, I went in and I cleaned up little things after because sometimes things get covered up. So when you're doing this so much, sometimes I don't, I don't worry until the end, until it's a problem. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So yeah, moving on. Do you want to do the next part? I would love to. I feel like I took a little <laughs> <laughs> What is next? So we are throwing in the, from the uh, beginning where we photograph the, the perfume bottle. So that's what we're going to be throwing in and it's going to end up looking pretty cool uh just like that so that's how oh, we're gonna, I love, I we're love. gonna... and we have some comments in here um mm -hmm. that i wanted to make out like i know y'all have mentioned like oh that you should have used stock images somebody has said well making your own assets is not bad one you can sell them if you see no use so that is an option mm -hmm. um and then carol made a comment saying where did you empty the fish tank hope your plumber is on speed dial <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have like um we have a like shop a, sink at our yeah, studio it's like a mop uh, sink yeah but our plumber was not on speed dial so. <laughs> We did have to empty it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was interesting. But all right. So we'll get into this. Um, so this is uh our mask out from earlier from when we had um photographed that um hypnotic poison perfume. And then here's just that quick mask, and then we angled it a little bit so because that's the position we're wanting. And then we ended up having to mask out from that skull that we put in just so to, to make it look more dynamic and throwing it in in the middle of that um 
the paint, the cloud, the ball, mm -hmm. the blobs, <laughs> the blobs. So uh, how did we do that? I think I just, I literally command T and then sometimes I turn the opacity down so I can see the ridges. Mm -hmm. And then I just went in with a brush and just did it that way. Cause this was also before the beautiful objects of like tool. <laughs> so something we can try here is maybe we'll throw that there and lower the opacity and we can just mask that out. If you would like to do it this way, or we can go back and see if we have that, that mm -hmm. skull masked out from earlier. Um, but just as like a quick mask, we can do something like this. I don't think it was too refined earlier. Yeah. Cause I knew that the bottle would be in front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like, obviously this is a little rough, but it gives a very similar idea of like throwing it behind that, that front blob right there. Mm -hmm. And th then we ended up something like this and then adding to that top part. I think what I did was I copied it and then I put multiply to make it darker as the blending mode. Mm -hmm. You could totally do a curves layer. Um, I truly don't know why I did it that way. <laughs> it would be a lot more normal to do a curves layer, but I think it had something to do with wanting the smoke to come through in a certain way. And then I also, um, sometimes I'll... Go ahead. Oh, sometimes I copy it and I make it like one flat little layer and then I'll turn the opacity down to get the smoke to come in the front mm -hmm. of like the brush, just like we did earlier with the smoke on the hands. Mm -hmm. So then this was a, a like another piece we grabbed from a, a separate piece mm. of that that paint in the water to that in front there. So it kind of just really immerses that bottle and the end of the mm -hmm. end of the ball. So you can see how great it was. Yeah, that was before. <laughs> A little ice. And then now that's really just immersed into mm -hmm. that color. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so just getting her to come through. Let's turn off. I wonder if any of these. Yeah, so that um, because I had brushed the opacity down. So, yeah, like I wrote off on these to leave them off just so it doesn't ruin the effect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then let's see. Did I add another one? Yes, I did. Oh, wow. There's so many. I think There's... we threw one in front yeah. of everything just to kind of finalize that immersion. <laughs> yeah, and I put it on hard light. So you can see how the the different blending modes really wow. like affect the opacity of it, which is really cool. Just all the different things you could do. There's so many options. But yeah, so this is how it's supposed to look minus my accidental red dot. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Um, deciding on hard light and then turning that opacity down, which obvious, like it could have been done as well after I masked it in, I could have played with those features, but you know, then I would just kind of, sorry, gonna, gonna do, um, if I hit mask and then I could just go in, let's turn this off, go in here and then let's find that ball again. So we're going to take off this mask. Because I'm like, you know what? I don't want to have to mask this out manually. I'm going to find the ball. And then go back up here again. And then hit mask. Mm -hmm. And then now you can turn the opacity down. You can change the color so it isn't so distracting. And then turn that off. One second. I think because this is would normally look like this with that. Oh, also because I only put it on a product, which is another thing. So I'm mm -hmm. taking this off of affecting that hidden layer, putting that onto here so we can play with this in real time. And then I'm going to go ahead, hit a brush, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to get it off of everything else. Mm -hmm. Just because we already have so much smoke in there. And I believe we'll add a little bit more later, but this right now is about the product, which is the main girl. Yeah. So, yeah see the difference of like mm -hmm. it just gives that like little realism aspect yeah it definitely does and then if i want my brush to be you know to lower that hardness of that so those edges don't really and then yeah so that's, that's honestly the fun of compositing is just what else can you add <laughs> oh this is so dope did you guys have like a before i, I guess coming up with the overall concept for this mm -hmm. shoot 
did you guys do, do you create mood boards or what, how did you kind of break down, have an idea of each element from like the concept of the, the, the glass bowl, the nails, the overall kind of like witchy feel that it gives. Yeah. Um, where did that inspiration come from? It's funny because sometimes things just like hit me and I'm like, okay, we're going to do this. So this one actually, the creative idea hit me before the product did. Ah. So I knew that I really wanted to do witch hands in a crystal ball. And I knew that I wanted to be very dramatic with smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, it was like, well, what can we find that's going to fit this creative brief? Yeah. So um, we went online and we typed in like, you know, witchy. We also knew that we wanted perfume for our portfolio. Mm -hmm. So we typed in like witchy perfume, spooky things, and hypnotic poison came up. And we were like, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yeah. Like ding, ding, ding. That is literally <laughs> perfect. <Yeah. laughs> She's our girl. So yeah, that's what happened with that. But sometimes, um, you know, creative ideas come in a lot of different ways. Sometimes they hit you like that. And sometimes you think, well, I have this one photo. I want to make a couple other photos that compare with it. Mm -hmm. So then you come up with other concepts. Like we did um, kind of like a poison apple. We did like dripping mm -hmm. goop from this for another shot. And just adding on to the brief in any way you can that isn't the same exact photo. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and then having this be this way we knew that well we want some more highlights on here um so i went ahead and i made a fake highlight i used my curved pen tool let's mm -hmm. turn off the top one so you can see it better um but yeah i'm just gonna hit p and then let's see if logan's photoshop is different mm -hmm. there it is so here's that drop down menu i'm gonna go i don't see your curve pen tool if I hit shift P, will it come up? There it is. In there. Why is she down there? I don't know. <laughs> She's banished. Okay. So what I would do is on a new layer, not on the current layer I'm working on, let's go up here and let's hit this little button. It's going to have its own layer. And I'm just going to do it down here just so you guys can see. I'm going to click right here. And then I'm going to hit, um, oops, nope. Ah! Command Z. Command Z is what I'm going to hit. <laughs> I'm going to hit option. And then when I hit option, it takes off the curvature points right there. Mm. So I'm able to, you know, ah. just kind of like, honestly, I use this more than the normal pen tool because I use, I just, I love being able to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to hit selection. Um, zero. I'm going to do a Gaussian blur. So I'm just going to hit zero. And then I would fill this. So you go to... Is it edit fill? Normally I just hit the hot keys mm -hmm. um, and you can hit white and then okay. And then there it is. But from there you want it to be, so like right here, see how it's like minus our new one. See how it's more blurry? Mm, yeah. So what I would want to do is I would want to go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Mm -hmm. And then you can see it by hitting like preview yeah. and stuff. You can see like, oh, this looks more realistic versus earlier. Uh, that looks good to me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to hit Command T. So I remember thinking about this a lot. I'm like, okay, highlights are hitting right here in the middle. Mm -hmm. But highlights are hitting stronger on the right nail right here and strong on the product right here. Mm -hmm. And I also felt like it was really distracting on top of the ball. So I went ahead and just curved it, put it on the side a little smaller you want it to be a ding yeah. not like the whole show and that's yeah. it's so much better oh wow i love that <laughs> especially again your attention to detail <laughs> you know focusing on where the light is hitting mm -hmm. on the hands on the bottle it makes sense to where it should hit on technically the spear so i really really love that thank you yeah, that's that's always something that is really important is looking at the highlights and the shadows of any mm -hmm. image if you're gonna add in smoke or more shadows or just all of these elements you want to make sure that it's looking realistic unless yeah. of course you're making it as a joke like <laughs> <laughs> but okay so then from here i do this thing where i like to combine all of my layers because i don't want to worry about where a mask is or where all these things are and i'll just make a copy of everything so that everything underneath is my millions of layers mm -hmm. 
But now I'm starting from here and I usually do it towards the end when I'm adding in final touches and color grading, just so it feels like I'm starting from like a new canvas. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to hit shift option, click E. Um, and it's going to take actually, yeah, you want to make sure everything above it is off or you're on the top layer. Um, cause it will combine like everything that is on and then wherever you're clicked is where it's going to put it. Does that make sense? So that's why it put it right here. Cause I was clicked right here versus if I was down here, it would put it down there, but it would still copy everything. Um, so anyways, I moved that up to the top and there she is. So that's our new top copy. And then I did a quick like camera raw layer. And don't be like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, use a smart layer. And this was like, I didn't think about it. I should have done it. But you want to go ahead and turn it into. Invert for smart object. Right there. Yeah. And yeah. then you can go into the, the camera raw up top. You can go into camera raw filter. You can do all your adjustments, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's not going to look like what we did. <laughs> that, that was our mistake that we did. But uh, but the benefit of having that smart filter is just, oh, you don't like it or you need a little mm -hmm. more contrast. You can go back, you can click it, and you can adjust what you already did. So. And if you didn't do that, then you can't. Then you can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. So work smarter. Work smarter. Yes. Yeah. It's cool having it there too, because if you're editing multiple assets, especially for a client and you need that same camera raw filter for multiple images, you know, you can just like copy it and put it on the next file or mm -hmm. worst comes to worst, you can see exactly what you did. Yeah. <laughs> so um, something I would definitely do for this is not the hue, but the luminance of the reds, because they're all kind of like muddled in there. I want them mm -hmm. to stand out a little bit more but I definitely don't want it to be so orange. So I'd probably make those a little bit more red. Mm. Let's zoom in so we can actually see, right? Oh, that's there perfect. We go. Yeah, there we go. So not about there. And then when you click on this eye, you can see exactly what you're doing. Sometimes when you're staring at it, it's like, mm -hmm. whoa, what am I? And your <laughs> eyes go blurry. Yep. <laughs> and you don't know where you started. So I tend to do that. And then if I'm not just for right here, but for the whole camera raw filter, I'll click down here as well. So you can see before any adjustments at all and then everything that's been done. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see how far you've come. Um, it's a good little mood booster too, if you're, if you're in it too long. But anyways, that's what I would do for general color grading, just kind of mm -hmm. making all the highlights and shadows good. Um, but this is what I ended up settling on. And then from here, like zooming in, this is where I go in and I'm looking at everything. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know what? These nails, they're kind of round and I want her to be vicious. So I want her to be like, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so I went ahead and I sharpened those and I did that using the clone stamp and a patch mm -hmm. tool. So just hitting like S, these are those moments where Cool thing about the clone stamp is it's taking these exact pixels and it's painting it over right here mm -hmm. and all you have to do is hit like shift s right and it's and then i would take the patch tool and that little like pixel right there that i don't like oh let's just move it and then mm -hmm. boom and i would do that for all of these girls so and then i'm gonna hit option that's how you select i kind of want it to be as close as possible so that it's the same and then shift click Mm -hmm. and we're just sharpening them that's all <laughs> little nail file yeah <laughs> little nail file the virtual nail file virtual yeah. nail file i love that <laughs> and then you just go in and what happened to that selection <laughs> my hand like there you go so yeah you just clean that up i love it. and i have another question so mm -hmm. you know what we talked about like when you were in camera raw and you were showing how like you have the little um the eye tool so you can see the before and after because sometimes when you're staring at something for so long it tends to like you know blur everything blurs together um when you're working on composites like this that are so detailed and, and have so many different components are you taking breaks throughout your editing are you like being intentional <laughs> Are you being intentional with like, all right, cool. I've been sitting here for four hours. Girl, it's time to step away. 
<laughs> at what point do you begin to dis dis yeah, dis 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 <laughs> yeah definitely definitely yeah. sometimes i'll be like okay we finished a section let's just get up and not yeah. look at another screen like Mm -hmm. there's been times where I'm like, I'm going to take a lap around the building outside. <laughs> or... We're going to go to a coffee shop that's 30 minutes away for no reason. Yeah. Like, we'll do yeah. that. We'll do all these things. Treat. <laughs> oh, I love, um, yeah. And there's also, just so many details to all of this. And I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These edits take full days and sometimes yeah. multiple days because you have to have like a mental breather. Like, you get to a point where you're staring at it for so long, there's nothing else you can do, even though there's work to be done, because your brain is so burnt out that you can't, you can't even realize what's left, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and another yeah. thing is also even like, sometimes we're in the middle of an edit and this fog, like say when we were doing the fog from uh, the mm -hmm. beginning, we have maybe 200 photos of just fog so yeah. we're we're putting different fog pieces in the photo and making sure we get the actual wow. one that we want so like that takes a lot of time as well so oh, wow yeah. yeah and we have two very uh one very mischievous cat but we have two cats that make sure that they, take <laughs> because they will meow and let you know when they they're, do crazy when stuff. they're ready <laughs> yeah so um we almost so now it's just like finishing touches right and I would zoom back and I believe when I looked at this, I was like, it's missing something. And I knew that the ball just didn't feel quite right. So I wanted to add a little bit more smoke. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to turn it into something like this. But by doing that, let's see, let's just go ahead. And so once again, you can see I did the hard light with the opacity and the fill. But if I was to delete that and then have that on normal, I would be bringing in this that same photo from earlier but just bringing it in and kind of like let's go ahead and select the ball just knowing that it needs a top layer of smoke that isn't mm -hmm. colored hitting the mask and then you can play and like where do i mm -hmm. like it and i really like when it hits through these because it just feels so especially that one um ethereal you know so yeah, and then that's mm. still a little aggressive. Yeah. So if you just turn down the opacity a little bit, it becomes much more realistic. Yeah. And then you can see where the object select tool right here. Um, it like, yeah, let me zoom in. You can see where it kind of missed the mask a little bit. So you can either go in and you can mask that or you could just go to your earlier already perfect mask all the way down here. 20 layers back. Yeah, 50 million years ago. <laughs> and you can also just paint that in. So yeah, that's always really helpful. And then if you hit um, Command Shift I, I believe, mm -hmm. it's going to invert the mask. So if you want to work on the other side, so let's say I want to remove it from the outside of the ball, come back up here to my mask and, and then you just yeah. take it off like that, which is really helpful. So yeah, I use that all the time. It's just getting the mask perfect. That takes mm -hmm. a lot of time. And then figuring out how you want these blending modes and how you want the things to just hit. Mm -hmm. And then I also, um, I threw this color on it just because sometimes they export things and it looks one way on the screen. Mm -hmm. And then when you export it like to your phone or just to see how it's gonna look, uh, it's way too saturated or it's way too desaturated. So I kind of just threw that on there to calm it down a little bit for the overall photo. It was just too much. And then um, a little bit more smoke on front of the nails because they felt like they weren't, you know, they felt too in front. So things like that, just kind of looking at your photo and being like, what else could this use? What doesn't feel right? Yeah. And then getting those little details at the end, especially when you want to be done and you think it's done just take another look at it because yeah <laughs> it reaches a point where it's done but you know you want it to but yeah so we did this before generative ai came out mm -hmm. but we wanted to see what we could do with generative that's AI. that's a good point oh i love um so i really liked this oh it's gonna show all of them oh, it ruined my secrets <laughs> okay so um it made all these different bases. I kind of like this one because it's like spooky in the right way. Um, 
but you can see so you can see all the different iterations right if i boop, boop, boop. well i guess i only saved this one okay no they're up here where is it on your computer can you get to show all the little bases usually it'll have like an icon of all of them yeah sorry about that oh you just put, hit this uh, <laughs> little arrow right there so you yeah. can see the different options but i you know zooming out like I knew that I liked that one the most. It kind of got the brief when I said crystal ball base, and then I tried newsstand, like new stand, not news stand. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, she's my favorite. And then I would go in and I'd probably, I love how like it also, it even added in the bottom. Um, mm, yeah, and it added in the bottom differently every time, which was interesting. Ah. So yeah, it kind of made its yeah. own rendition of yeah. something that we have in there. So yeah, so that was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but you can always go in. You can see how it looks a little different. You can just go in and mask that out. Boop, boop, boop. And this is if, because honestly, I'm not gonna lie. This wasn't my favorite base. It was just the only one that could hold a ball that big mm. um, that was available. <laughs> So having AI just be able to have full creative control. Yeah. I'm going to hit shift click for the edge of the table. And then I'm going to make my brush smaller and go in and bring in the little pieces on the edge. Hit X. Okay, there we go. And then just try and make it as like blended in as possible. Yeah. It looks like it made its own little table ridge right there. So yeah, this is where I would go in and I would just kind of blend things out. And then, oopsie. Honestly, I could just select that. But the idea here is if I wanted to keep this, I could. I would probably go into my smoke and I would overlay the smoke on top. This is a good base, kind of like the underpainting of an oil painting. Mm -hmm. But I would put the smoke on top just to really bring through those real, like the realism and the highlights. Um, and then... But that would take a little bit of time. So if we have time, I'll do that. But and then we were like, oh, let's do some floating candles. Because <laughs> we thought it'd be fun and spooky. And then um then I was starting to get silly with it. And then I thought, well, what if we added in a gnome? <laughs> and it just it made that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <little> egg nose. <laughs> okay, but yeah, the floating candles, it gave us a couple of different options. And what was cool was when I you know, sometimes you have a prompt and you're like, okay, this prompt isn't working. So then I would find a prompt that would work. And you can see how this has a different backdrop because I took it from here. And um, it was cool because it originally also was this original candle. I'll show you mm -hmm. this one all the way over here. And it's cool because it generates the background in the selection. But then when I moved it, it generated the new background. Oh. Let's see. Of... Uh, Da, 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 of like this guy as you can see when I turn it it's it's that exact candle right there oh wow. and then yeah and it wasn't even a new you know it's not like I recircled over here and did it because when I did that it wasn't giving me exactly what I wanted but this one seemed to be making more realistic candles mm -hmm. so I moved this over and then I would hit generate and then it would give me the new backdrop oh I love which wow. is up here yeah there you go so yeah, so that was really cool. And AI is always so much fun to play with at the end. And generative AI is good, especially when you want to expand your canvas. Yes. Or if oh, you... yes. Oh, it's so good at that. Um, yeah, let's that let's try it out. Like. Here, I'll let yes. you do it. So let's grab that, um, that cropping tool. And then we'll just kind of pull out, I don't know, let's say... That's good. Yeah. That much right there. Honestly, you could do even more. It would still be good. Mm -hmm. Let's just, and then we just hit generate. Unless you want to add something specific, I guess, in the yeah. background. But just generating, you let that warm up. It kind of takes a second. But and then, and then it's just gonna. Oh, now it's generating. <laughs> <laughs> it also works really well as like a content aware when you're in a bind and you're like, let me see if yes. how this is gonna work. Generally, it works great. <laughs> And it gets you at a lot of like wow. not situations that you couldn't have edited out, but it saves you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Yeah. So like it 
did all the um like all that smoke on the side there mm. it mimicked like these curtains draping down even on the top this is uh really cool so like that's where it was yeah that's where it wow. is now. Show these girls and here's the other renditions so it gives you three yeah. yeah i like that one that's beautiful but that i like the great. bottom on that so mm. i probably make two of these and i would keep the bottom for one and then keep the top for the other yeah one. uh let's see since we have some time okay i'll turn that off so mentally i could remember which one i'm doing because you know adhd <laughs> oh, oh. Right, so we have see. a question um yeah carol asks um the floating candles are great but can you get a reflection of the red one in the glass oh oh yeah whoa um Let's see. And then I'm going to take away this bottom. Yeah, we'll, we'll try that yes, in a sec. I, oh, of course, of course. I want this bottom. Right <laughs> uh, just combining those two assets that it made. Okay, so oh, back wow. to the candles. Let's see where they are. That the red, top yeah, red yeah. one? Yeah, that guy. Smart, because it would need a reflection. Let's see. Normally I'm removing reflections, so <laughs> this is a fun little little challenge i'd probably take it and then i would put it over it do, do, do. i definitely want to get everything else off of it the see this one there you go is it on that's gonna slip the whole oh, i'm gonna have to just do it manually it's fine Okay, so we're good. We're doing all of these things that we talked about earlier. You know, we're <laughs> changing the brush and we're going to use shift click and we're making masks. You can even just circle with the object select tool. But didn't we just do that and it didn't? Well, it just circled the candle and, okay. and it might select it. Let's see. Going to make this even bigger. We can just go around. And what's great, I mean, we do have the both of us that edit these photos, but um, what's great is that sometimes we get stuck or sometimes we've been working too long. So that's mm -hmm. when we pass the edit back and forth yes. and really just make progress on some of these really intricate edits. So no, I think that's really great. Like that yeah. partnership is really neat because doing this by yourself. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't do any of it without her. So. <laughs> doing a rough selection yeah i love making him do frequency separation because i can do it but i can make him do it you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm just gonna not make this just perfect, a rough but little you get yeah. the idea yeah. mm -hmm. um i kind of think okay i'm gonna hit command t control click and i'm gonna flip it probably vertically just so mm -hmm. it's like you know it's a reflection it's gonna be upside down make it really small you think it would be like that? It would definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. Then you'd have to uh, liquefy it, probably. Liquefy or spearize? Uh, I guess you could you could try that one here. Yeah. This is fun. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta fix that. It's gonna bother me. And then also that girl. Okay. Yeah, let's try the spearize thing. Okay. You're on the mask. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let me do that. Oh, here they are. This is where they all usually pop up. So yeah. You just quick click mm -hmm. on your favorites. But okay, select, nope, filter, distort, sphere. We're gonna make it a hundred. Just gonna hit okay, see what it does. Oh. It did something weird. Did something uh, weird. Hmm. What if I flatten it? Sometimes I combine. I'll just there's probably another way to do it, but what I'll do is I'll just copy the layer and then I'll hit Command E and then mm -hmm. I'll just make it one flat layer, mm -hmm. um, just so it's already there. And a good thing you should probably do is always copy that, just so you have it, just in case. Let's see, distort sphere. Let's see if this works now. Okay, mm -hmm. it made it bigger, but that's what there's it did. There's also the other a one suggestion too. in the chat to warp it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that's another option. That or liquefy. Or so liquefy, let's try yeah. warp. Yeah, I think warp might be a good good way to do it. Let's pick the middle up because we want it to be do, 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 like around, you know. Mm -hmm. But not too round. Is that good? What do we think? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like that, that goes with the curve, yeah. And then turn the opacity down, mm -hmm. but like not so much that it's like. I think it being at the top, it would be almost like dead center. Like uh, a little alfalfa here, like maybe something like is that in the middle. Is that him? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. In there, yeah, we can warp it again too. Mm -hmm. Let's just see kind of where that's sitting. So I feel like that that could, and it would definitely be, if we want to be like realistic about it, it would be bigger on like the bottom end of it. Um, just since that's the closest to the ball. So we could even like warp that a little wider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, and then that being, it might be even like stretched out a little bit more. Mm -hmm since that's like the widest spot it's it's kind of hard to see there's a lot going on in the ball but i think but that is what it would look that, like i think yeah. that's very that's very, very close over. yeah very much so. oh awesome this was so oh i love i love i love <laughs> we have about call it five six minutes left in the stream and mm -hmm. so we can just do kind of like an overview of what we did today and kind of start to wrap up yeah yeah you want to take it uh, sure, let's do it. <laughs> so um, we started by like completely compositing, like going from the bottom of our composites all the way back to like our photo shoots. Wow, I'm really messing this up. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, great, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this is like kind of where we were. We This is what we shot in the studio and we just really decided to like the, to throw in these hands and mm -hmm. um we shot them separately because we couldn't you know shoot them together without being in the way of the fog mm -hmm. right and then we also pulled in some of our paint paint in fish tank spills <laughs> acrylic, acrylic. acrylic <laughs> i don't know how to say it right but like this is where we went a little more fun inside of the crystal mm -hmm. ball and got really dynamic with what we were doing um, and then next we went to the, the bottle section. So this is when we threw in our perfume bottle mm -hmm. and really, uh, made it more immersive into the crystal ball. Mm -hmm. What? And we added in even more blobs and mm -hmm. even more, even more blobs, blobs yep. on blobs. We talked about, uh, like. Look at the background color, how to get it to what we want. Yes. I don't know what this is. It's but... <laughs> just a map somewhere. Um, but yeah, this, we talked a lot about like changing the colors of items in, in our Photoshop documents. And and we talked about why we did that as well. Yes. Um, just sometimes you have limited funds. Sometimes you have limited resources. Um, just even if you went to the store and they didn't have mm -hmm. the fabric you needed and your shoot was tomorrow <laughs> you know so it's just a lot of things are is always just making it work and Absolutely. how you can make it work yeah um and photoshop is always here for you <laughs> so yeah and then we talked oh, about wow. we touched on gen ai and what you can yes. do with ai and yeah is oh, there so any other great. questions yeah so we actually have one question that i think will be great to kind of mm -hmm. end it all on um trey robertson has the question they said it's a silly question but i also don't think so um what is your favorite snack while <laughs> editing <laughs> oh while editing um mm, yours is goldfish ah! <laughs> Listen, me and my cat love some goldfish <laughs> and lately i've been kind of down in the Capri Suns, um, <laughs> the little treat. <laughs> I don't know I what love, I like. What I do love. I eat? You eat anything that's around. Yeah, I, I eat anything that's <laughs> in the pantry. So, do you guys have also another question I usually like to ask? Do you have a certain genre of music you usually are playing, or do you have any music or a TV show, or what's like likely to be on the background while you're editing? Um, either drag. <laughs> drag <race. laughs> um, lately okay so i go through phases but it's always something to do with like trixie whether it's like the podcast or just something like drag related um or i will listen to like noah khan or shuffle mm -hmm. mm. sometimes we'll just throw, throw up a lo-fi girl on a tv in the background so <laughs> yeah but that one makes me sleepy so that's true. i have to limit that 
<laughs> oh, I love, I love. Awesome. This was honestly so incredible. Thank you so much, um, Joel and Logan, for just taking us throughout this whole process into yeah. your world of compositing. This was just so beautiful. Make sure y'all go ahead and give them a follow. Um, thank you, Voodoo Val, for dropping the website, Instagram. Make sure you go ahead and reach out and holler at them if you need anything, any questions, or if you're in Nashville and want to hire them, make sure you do. <laughs> but I, I also. <laughs> Oh, if you missed any aspects of this live, you can always go back and watch it, whether it's on YouTube or Behance. So feel free to do that. And up next, we want to make sure that you go ahead and experience the enchanted world of fine art and fashion photography with Adam Bird in our latest Adobe Spotlight, Sp Adobe Spotlight live stream. So stay tuned for that and we will see y'all next time. Yeah, Bye. Bye.